Welcome back. 20 million Americans had something in common in the 1950s. They all bowled. Back then, you could even watch five bowling shows a week here on Channel 4. One child of the 50s was a terrible bowler back then and still is pretty awful 60 years later. Fortunately, Craig Worth decided to be a TV reporter instead of a professional bowler. His look back at the golden age of gutter balls is tonight's Worth Watching. When you're wondering what to do, let's go, go bowling. There was probably no individual sport bigger than bowling in the 50s and 60s. There were thousands of folks in leagues all over Utah. Companies sponsored team after team. And of course, our TV station called KDYL back then had a team as they all bowled in dozens of bowling centers. Well, some are just memories now. One Utah bowler has all those memories and lots of the trophies. She is Bev Miller. She has been bowling since 1952. That's when you could bowl in a new center every day for a month with a couple more to spare. Back in the glory years of the 50s. You bowled all the time, it seems. Now some places just for fun and in others competitively in league play. And of course, for those iconic bowling trophies. I think you considered what kind of bowling you wanted to do, whether it was for fun or for competitive. And I bowled like the old Pal de Mar and the Rancho Lanes, and they no longer exist. But I did follow the competitive path. Now the ultimate competitive path back 60 and even 80 years ago was to be accepted into the Lady Majors. As far as leagues go, it was the best in Utah. That was one of my uh, bucket list when I was bowling and I wasn't on the Lady Majors and I had that in my sight. <laughs> well, she made it and she still bowls in the Lady Majors. Yes, they are going at it to this day. Now, as you can guess, Utah was quite the place for bowling back then. Sure, the country was in a bowling craze, but Utah was right up there. In fact, one of our station's first big TV shows was bowling from the Ritz Classic Lanes. And our pin buster show was always big. Every league score made the papers. Tournaments, now those were big news. And you had ads in about every paper. A ball, bag, and shoes at Wolf's Sporting Goods for $32.50 with six months to pay. Now, just like bowling, even the ads were competitive. A ball, bag, and shoes was undercut by Zenix at $31.80. Good grief, people were even stealing a ball, bag, and shoes when you had a real deluxe set and paid $33.50. But once inside the bowling center, it was quite something. Always a new bowler almost every night as the sport grew. Now that's actually one of Bev's biggest memories. I remember people that worked there, how they tried to encourage you. Whoop, not like that, never upward. And with popularity, lanes changed from, well, kind of plain into the groovy colors of the 60s. Even the balls became more colorful. Who is that young guy with a purple bowling ball anyway? And even more colorful. And keeping score, that also changes today. But those are memories of a time gone by when 25 cents bought you a line of bowling and it seemed everyone bowled. It was a good relief for an entire family to have something to do at a reasonable cost. Oh, bowling is still big, but there was a time that Bev could have had her choice between 25 or 30 bowling establishments in the area. Although even having 50 would have never helped me. Well, yet another thing that I don't get any better at with age. Craig Worth, ABC4 News. Nice try, though. The Great Salt Lake Bowling Association provided all those great pictures in that story. They also surprised our crew with that photo of a 30-something Craig with the new purple bowling ball in its collection. 
Craig says it was distributed to bowling alleys to warn them from ever letting him in their places. He's really that bad.